uh, took me by surprise the way he started running through his home. Yeah. And because I thought he was at home. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's that's another trope being in a familiar place, but then it's not the place that you thought it was. Closet. Where is this room door? Where is Bathrooms and <laughs> that to me felt like a gag on <laughs> Hanna Barbera. It was because they produced this, right? It was because yeah. they keep repeating the same background. That's, yeah. what, that's mm -hmm. exactly what I thought. At least mm -hmm. I agree with you. Uh, vote for us for the Chronicle Awards, but we're up for best podcast, and I'm up for best movie critic. So if you can go to vote.austinchronicle.com. Sign in for the Best of Austin 2023 ballot. Register with your email, your name, first and last, and your zip code. Go to the Politics and Media category. Go down to Podcast. Go down to Double Toasted. And cast your vote. Got a good one for you today. Yeah, I was surprised by this one. Happily surprised, I, I should okay, say. Okay, good, good. Mm -hmm. Good. You can never tell. This yeah. make me watch this bullshit. What did he pick this week? Some I've what? never heard of or seen. All right. Stupid thing that he watched as a kid. <laughs> Making me watch. All right. Here we go. Well, oh. for once, it's something that you've seen yeah. and I have not seen. Yeah, yeah. So this is uh, what we have for you today. It's something that I do remember being mm. heavily. And by the way, just to let you know what we do here. I mean, you already know if you're here. But just in case. You know, this is the show where, uh, that bug on me. This know. is the show where we take a retro cartoon show. And by retro, we mean 20 years or 20 older. Years. Mm -hmm. You have actually said that, you know, if it's not, if it's less than 20 years, that is not retro. We can't talk about it. So we take something that is 20 years or older, because that's officially retro. And it might be an episode of an old cartoon. It might be a movie. Something that we're doing today. It might be a special episode of something or something you may have never heard of before. We just want to educate you. But we take it, we review it, we have a conversation about it, and we do that with you. Mm. And a lot of times, well, lately, it's been stuff that I've seen. I've just been throwing at you. Yeah, I know. I'm just reacting to it and sharing my opinion on it. Yep. Mm -hmm. But today is going to be something that I remember being heavily promoted back in 1999. Yeah. But for some reason, and I love the guy who does all this stuff. Jen D. Tartofsky. Yeah, yeah, the guy who uh the guy who's uh, behind everything that uh you'll be seeing today, the animator behind the style and uh several shows that you've seen, Jenny Tartakovsky. But I like his stuff, but I've never seen uh I've never seen I like this show that he did back in the day. So you have seen this show? Okay. I have oh yeah. No, okay. I used to watch Dexter's Laboratory all the time. Okay. Which means, you know, I, well I if I watch that all the time, then I don't know why I have never made an attempt to watch you described it as a classic. Yeah. Uh, Dexter's Laboratory, Ego Trip. In the future, Mandark finally possesses all the power he's longed for. But at a special time, Saturday at 8 on Cartoon Network. Now, feature might be used a little loosely right here because this was, it wasn't even an hour long. It's like 51 minutes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But Cartoon Network was doing a lot of these, uh, these features, specials. these yeah. specials back mm -hmm. in the day. And... You know, if they were longer than 30 minutes and they considered that to be a feature. Yes. You know, they can they consider that to be a, a, a they're, they're a movie. Mm -hmm. They're the uh, they're they're, uh, they're what would you call it? Their uh, full length debut. Sure. Sure. If yeah. you will. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you didn't watch Dexter's Laboratory, then. You probably don't know any of this, what they're saying right here. And who's this kid? Who's this little Russian kid? Yeah. Or <laughs> German kid. And, and who's this uh who's this evil dumb and dumber looking kid? <laughs> Man Doc. Who's, who's this evil nerd ass Jim Carrey looking kid right here? He does he does he looks like was it Lloyd? Was it Lloyd, Lloyd from Dumb yeah. and Dumber? Yeah. Yeah, he looks like Lloyd. <laughs> A little evil Lloyd. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, uh, so Dexter's Laboratory dealt with a genius, and I, I call him a little Nazi. <laughs> boy, genius, boy genius. Boy genius. Yes, yeah. nobody could ever get his accent figured out. Uh, I thought it was very Nazi German. I thought it was Russian. <laughs> and you thought it was Russian. Some mm -hmm. people said French. But he had a laboratory, and this laboratory was huge, it, to, to, especially when you saw their house. Like, the laboratory is bigger than the house that they had in the oh, suburbs. Oh, it doesn't make any sense. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe he's that much of a genius to where he can kind of create some like, you know, some spatial time dimension, Pocket dimension going on. or matter manipulation. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. But the lab was so cool that it was always under attack. Usually 
from his big sister Dee Dee. That's right. And when I say under attack, it's just her being nosy and coming in and messing with his stuff, pushing buttons. Are his his what at one time just used to be a, a guy that he didn't like, but ended up being his full arch nemesis, Mandark. Mm -hmm. And Mandark was also a boy genius who was not as smart as Dexter and hated that. And so every chance he got, he would try to, to destroy Dexter's laboratory. But in this case, he has bigger ambitions. He wants to take over the world, which is a particular thing that he found inside of Dexter's lab. Uh, so, like I said, I had never seen this before. And how did I like it? Well, hmm. I'll say this. Let's go ahead and get into, into the... Uh, to the to the movie, I start okay, to say sure, sure, let's sure, jump sure. In. unless you got something you want to. No, well, you know it's cool because this was my, I believe, it was my introduction to Jenny Tartofsky, who I've been a fan of for, I mean, at this point, decades. That's the yeah. thing. Like Dexter started in the '90s, yeah, and then like after Dexter's Laboratory, you know, I'm obviously he, you know, uh, Jenny Tartofsky worked on Powerpuff Girls, but then he did Samurai Jack and did the yep. 2D Star Wars: The Clone Wars, and then he yep. got into you know big films and things, and most recently uh, Primal. And so these are kind of like his humble uh, beginnings. And matter of fact, this was the first thing he ever directed was uh, this this movie this was trip. Mm -hmm. wow i did not know that yeah so no i think he's a he's really unique voice and uh just to to see his humble beginnings and where he is now is pretty incredible so i, I, I love the guy well, like i said i'd never i knew he was this this was my introduction to his work too mm -hmm. but um i never saw this back in 1999 if i didn't know any better if i didn't know anything at all if i like if i was just cutting on the tv yeah and didn't know that this was even Dexter's laboratory, I would actually think that this was probably a Tim Burton thing. Mm. I mean, that sounds like Batman. <laughs> it does. sounds like it does. Danny Elfman. Yeah, well, at the time, that was pretty big. The no, it was. Were, were huge. No, it was. And it, it was, was Warner Brothers. And that's true. Yeah. You know, it's, but it had that, that looks like uh, Tim Burton's style right there. Yeah, that was kind of like Mandark's style, though, like his lab. They, they wanted to make it distinctly look different from Dexter. And where Dexter, it looks very utilitarian. It looks yeah. like, you know, typical science yeah. lab. But his is like all weird shapes and just monstrous looking and <laughs> oozing materials. <laughs> Story! <laughs> 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 it's like not nothing that Mandark makes looks practical. Okay. <laughs> That's why he's always losing to Dexter. Because yes, exactly. nothing he has is practical. Mm -hmm. So, he, like I said, having never seen this, uh, they opened up with a joke that caught me completely <laughs> off guard. I, and, anybody, and the short time they had it up there, I said, are y'all doing what I think y'all are doing? Are you insinuating what I think you're trying to insinuate? Mm -hmm. Just a little more, dear. <laughs> Got it. See, hon? I told you I could do it. Okay, that's how we gonna start the movie. Man, All right. I love it. Well, I was like, I can't wait to see where this goes from here. And again, when I first saw this as a kid in what, 1999, that threw right over my head. Maybe I'm the nasty one. I said, that is, I know they're trying to insinuate, and this is for the adults out there, but I thought it was so blatant, Very blatant. that even kids would get it. No, no, I was I was a dumb kid in 1999, <laughs> so I, I didn't get it. But Jenny Tartoski, he was, I mean, he was, oh, these animators are horny. And from yeah. Jenny Tartoski to Bruce Tim, they put so much sexual innuendo. They got away with a lot in the 90s. I was wondering, how did they get away with that? Yeah, I, they didn't, I don't think they cared as much in the 90s. Because, you know, in the 80s, everything was just so conservative, so strict. Yeah. But I really do think, because of Batman the Animated Series, because that was a more adult animated show for kids yeah. that that opened the floodgates and it just proliferated. And I think that's why they're able to get away of stuff like this. When you are on the networks, the networks were required to go through strict uh, censorship. Mm -hmm. uh, there was even a point where, I don't know when to stop, but you were also required to teach some sort of lesson, oh. some morals. Uh, you, Yeah, you, you had to be very careful about some of the jokes you put in. Mm -hmm. So when things start going to like Cartoon Network and you are off the networks, yeah. you know, oh, if you say I Cartoon see. Network, but we're talking about like, you know, we're talking about the big networks. Like, gotcha. Like uh, ABC, CBS, NBC, Fox. Mm -hmm. You know, once, once uh, you know, cable started coming in mm -hmm. and you weren't abiding by the rules oh, okay. of what was put on the networks, mm -hmm. You know, it was almost like you were out of the uh, you are you were in, uh out of national waters and That's you were right. on your yeah. own. You could do whatever you wanted. Yeah, to it's a degree, a, you could you could do whatever you want to do. Mm. Yeah, so well, to a degree. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, let's just see. You, you could get away with a lot more. Sure. If this is what we're starting with, <laughs> well, shit, I can't wait to see. By the end of the show, they might actually be having sex. Starting strong. Yeah, yeah. shit, he might have mine bent over that that table back there. <laughs> uh, but you know, uh, uh, instead. And I, I'm gonna tell you, man. I was uh, to me this started out a little slow mm. because 
I, maybe because I was expecting something, maybe because they set up that joke right there. But it started out like, you know, what you get typically from a Dexter's Laboratory right. episode. You know, Mandar comes in. Uh, you know, he's not trying to destroy the lab this time. That's different. He's trying to get this. I forgot what it was called. The uh, MacGuffin. Um, neuro. neuro <laughs> there you go. Why am I using all these big words? Science MacGuffin. <laughs> but when, wow. For once, I was going to sound smart. <laughs> you came in and said, don't even try. No, that's fine. <laughs> but I got it written right. The Neuroatomic Protocore. Okay. Is what he <laughs> Protocore. Protocore. We'll call it that. <laughs> the glowing dot there is what he wants. Nice. So is he, instead of destroying the lab, he's actually trying to get something right now. But he's coming in being man dark. He's coming in with the, the trademark man dark laugh. Yes. Yes. With this all powering neuroatomic protocol in my possession, I will make the world mine. <laughs> I love that at the beginning. Yes. 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 <laughs> Man, I got some of the best nerdy voices on here. Yeah, the voice acting this is incredible. The voices in here made me laugh. But you know, you got that. That's typical of a Dexter's Laboratory episode. Of course, Dee Dee's coming in mm -hmm. and messing with his lab, and he's like, Dee Dee, get out of my lab. I always loved the way she came in. Dee Dee was mainly challenged. Oh, she definitely was. Yeah. Well, even like how this, uh, it opens up when Mandark is spying on her. She's like doing like tea with her little uh, fluffy animals. She's just pouring shit everywhere. <laughs> it's like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> she's stupid. Well, she's, okay. no, she's stupid, yeah, yeah. She doesn't know what she's doing half the time. You know what, I'll I'll, I'll give her mainly challenged, man. <laughs> I'm not gonna say stupid. <laughs> she has a learning disorder, let's just say that. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> I I was always on Dexter's side, but like I would be annoyed with her no. constantly. Yeah, because she <laughs> listen. You know, if you can't trust her with a simple cup of tea, no. you can't trust her in that lab. Nope. She's mm -hmm. gonna blow this whole town up. Yeah, and she's done that on occasion. Yeah. <laughs> Come in and start pressing buttons on things she shouldn't be. With. She's an agent of chaos. Nope. I don't want to hear that shit. Don't even start. Shut up, Broad. Yeah. I'm not in the mood. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. I'm doing stuff. I want it to hurt you, Dee Dee. Go somewhere. I love now. I love that because he's like, whatever yeah. you're about to say is stupid. Mm -hmm. So don't even, don't even start. I'm sick of it. Yeah, don't, don't even say anything. Leave. Gendy Tartakovsky is a very visual director. Yeah, and, and the and so the, and the thing with that is, look, you give him, you give him ten minutes. Nine minutes of that will be visuals. Yeah, he, he he uses dialogue less and less nowadays. Yeah, he doesn't. This guy does not like dialogue. He doesn't yep. like writing dialogue or anything. He loves to animate. Yes, he loves animation. So I've noticed that th with this being fifty-one minutes long, he has a lot more time to fill with like just animation scenes, mm -hmm. animation scenes with no dialogue, action animation yeah. scenes. Um. So you know, but I do love that. I love, and I love this in, in, in Dexter's Laboratory, but I really did enjoy this here. Even though this was starting out like a regular episode, I said, oh, well, this is cool. He's got more time to fill in mm -hmm. with animation. Uh, and I love how he takes uh, action sequences. Yeah. Like action sequences from live action stuff. He's influenced by that. And he just spoofs them with the silliest animation. <laughs> I love that. They're playing all this dramatic music and they're just spinning the drawing around. Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the sound design is also really good in this, too. Yeah. That helps. No, it does. I like they said, you know, we don't feel like animating no more. Yeah. <laughs> We're not going to do any kind of cool pose. Mm -hmm. We're just going to have them, like, you know, make an X and just spin, <laughs> just spin the drawing around just a little bit. <laughs> That's that. <laughs> the music is dramatic, but yes. the action is not. That's yeah. what makes it so funny. It's these two nerds just fighting each other. These two nerds <laughs> fighting each other, but it's just a drawing of him just going around in a mm -hmm. circle. And, they, mm -hmm. you know, the music is like really blaring, but it's just nothing with the action. Uh, the drawing isn't even, that's what makes it so funny because the drawing isn't even that remarkable. But it does get funny when they do get dramatic. Oh, yeah. Because when they get dramatic, they get way over dramatic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a samurai. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> 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 I love, I love <laughs> touches like that. Yeah, that no, was very funny. A uh, great in the animation there. This is what I really do enjoy about this. Like random things just happen with Dexter. Like yep. out of nowhere, robots from the future, like Terminators, mm -hmm. show up to just after you kick TD out. Show, robots show up to kill him from the future. Oh, 
Yeah. <laughs> And it was like trying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very much. Even the suit that he had on. Yep. Yeah. It was the discs and things. You know, it's fun to watch this and see all the influences that he has here because uh, uh, Tartakovsky has gone through different phases. Oh, yeah. 100%. And, and with, uh, you know, this during this time, you know, 1999 and a little bit earlier, uh, it was that it was that time that was influenced very much by another People say just revolutionary cartoon. <laughs> oh, nightmare. <laughs> Ren and ass. Stimpy, man, that, mm -hmm. that, they love that ass. Yeah. Uh, Ren and Stimpy influenced a lot of animators that sure. came after that, including Tartakovsky, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now his animation has gone in so many different places, but um, you know, looking at a. a Looking at Dexter's laboratory, it definitely wasn't. Uh, it was influenced very much by Ren and Stimpy mm -hmm. at, at that time, because mm -hmm. uh, you, you, you know you saw a lot of things. Like uh, for one, like the backgrounds, they had this very flat graphic mid-century modern look. Yeah, this art style, very graphic art style, like very sixties. He also had it for like when we close up on characters, like they look gross and disgusting. Yeah, and yeah. that's what Ren and Stimpy often did. Oh, and characters, <laughs> were, you know. They, Animators were so happy that they could draw ass now. Yeah, oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. And put so on horny. all these characters' ass, and mm -hmm. you know, in some cases, titties. Mm -hmm. But you know, mm -hmm. it didn't matter. Like they, like you said, they were so horny they were putting asses on cats. They didn't care. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, look at look at that. Getting man. off to something, you know. Yeah, look. <laughs> I, I love the animation. Yeah. <laughs> it's the bounce, man. It's the bounce. People love that. Mm -hmm. That's why I say it was influenced by Ren and Stimpy because it was still within that period where sure. you had a lot of things, not just him. Uh, Powerpuff Girls. That's right. Uh, Craig McCracken worked on this show too. Yeah, he did. Mm -hmm. they're, they're friends, I think. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, Cow and Chicken. Yep. You know, uh, Rocco's Modern Life. SpongeBob. You know. SpongeBob. Came out in 99. So. The, oh, how could I forget this that? Went the same year this movie came out, SpongeBob came out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, SpongeBob was, you know, heavy. Probably one of the biggest influences from that. Yeah. But you don't see, um, you still see. His approach is trademark of not using a whole lot of dialogue today, but you don't see like that kind of graphic style anymore with the with the backgrounds. No. You know, they're, they're, everything's a little more detailed and fleshed out with the stuff that he's doing, at least for certain things like Primal. Oh, a little bit. He's still got a little bit of that influence in there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Come on, minimalist look. Yeah. But it did carry through even into Samurai Jack. That, oh, that, very much. That, I mean, that's, you know, of course. Oh, natural yeah. Natural successor to Dexter. Oh, yeah, very much. <clears throat> At this point, it's probably been more visuals and storytelling, you know, in the movie. Yeah, it's this, the beginning is a, a hey, here's all <laughs> the things you love about Dexter's laboratory. Yeah. Here's Dee Dee about to do something. Here's Man Dark. <laughs> here's, you know, Dexter's sexy mom. Here's dad that doesn't really know what's going on. And, and there's Dexter kind of getting annoyed being a badass. Yeah, there you go. Is. Yeah, all within 10 minutes, if, if not uh, less. But it did pick up when Dexter decides to go to the future to find out why these robots are sent to kill him, yeah. which we knew he was going to do. And also his ego is dr dr driving him to do that, oh, too. Yeah. I must be great in the future. Yeah. <laughs> if somebody wants to kill me, I must be something special. Yeah, he, yeah. Was, all, he was all... Yeah, that, the That's ego, his weakness. The ego trip is him, mm -hmm. yeah, really. Isn't it? Everybody thinks it's man, man dark, but no, it's, it's really him. him. He's got an ego's will. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, they go... So in the beginning, they go through the familiar time travel tropes. Yep. You know, being, being a stranger in another time. <laughs> Who are you? What are you doing here? What's your number? <laughs> <laughs> What's your number? Is that Tom Kenny? Yeah, it's Tom Kenny. Yeah, Tom Kenny's great, man. Tom yeah. Kenny does a lot of voices in this. Mm -hmm. uh, I, You know, I did like this because it kind of uh, took me by surprise the way he started running through his home. Yeah. And because I thought he was at home. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's that's another trope being in a familiar place, but then it's not the place that you thought it was. Closet. Where is this room door? Where is this room door? That was a guy. That to me felt like a gag on <laughs> Hanna Barbera. It was. Because they produced this, right? It was because yeah. they keep repeating the same background. That's, yeah. what, that's mm -hmm. exactly what I thought, at least. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. Here's where things really start to pick up for me because at first I was like, all right, we're seeing the same, you know, time traveling tropes. This is right. a lot of this is like an episode of Dexter. Mm -hmm. But when, because uh, I didn't see the trailer or anything for this, oh, okay. so I, didn't, I didn't know what was happening. Yeah, 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 yeah. But so when they finally got to 
meeting the other Dex Oh, 12 or what is it called? Yeah. Man, yeah. I laughed so hard because it's not what <laughs> oh, I expected. It's oh, it's so funny. Because I thought he was going to just be, because, okay, so if you've seen this, Dexter meets uh, in the future an adult version of himself, mm-hmm. who, which I thought was going to be talking like him, was going to be just as egotistical and smart as yeah. he is, and it was nothing like him. It's and it, it cracked me up. I thought, wait a minute, is is that is that an accent or is he nerdier? He's even nerdier. Yeah, I was like, that's what the thing is. At first, I thought his accent was just thicker, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but nah, man, I was like, he's way nerdy. He's nerdier. He's gotten more pathetic. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, he's he's uh he's 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 not the confident uh, no. Dexter that we know. Good morning, number twelve. Welcome to work. Ah, just yeah. made it. Immediately. <laughs> <laughs> you know he sounds like he sounds like Pat. Oh yeah, yeah, from yeah the the SNL character. He mm-hmm. sounds he sounds mm-hmm. just like uh, uh it's like Pat, <laughs> like 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 Pat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord. Uh, there's <laughs> an infamous SNL character, I should say. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Not I can't do that anymore. <laughs> I mean, you can. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't but, advise it. <laughs> Man, I'm trying to f- no trying to find no. a clip because <laughs> there's a there's a part where she's like my afternoon snack. Oh. <laughs> hey, is that a big fan of yours? <laughs> wow! <laughs> I mean, they nailed it. Yeah, pretty much. There you go, live action Dexter. <laughs> you, if they ever do a live action Dexter, mm-hmm. man, at least that version of Dexter. Mm-hmm. Hey, is that a big fan of yours? <laughs> hey. oh. This got really dark too at this moment. Oh yeah, because <laughs> because uh, the reason why this version of Dexter is so nerdy is because he's just kind of been beaten into submission, mm-hmm. and he's been beat down like like uh, in this in this alternative future, uh, Mandark has won. Yeah, he rules. And Mandark is like he's he not only is he his uh, or he, he's Dexter's boss, mm-hmm. but he's like a a dictator now. Pretty much, yeah, yeah, he's. You know, it's an alternative future where uh, he, not only he's a, the successful one, he's the boss, but he's the one that's just kind of treating people not as not as employees, but slaves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like automatons almost. Like, you would do what I want you yeah. to do. And he both emotionally, psychologically, and physically tortures them. And again, playing up a lot of sexual stuff no. here. Oh, yeah. Yo! Almost late for work again. <laughs> Got big titty chicks like washing his feet. Man, you got showing his ass. You gotta be careful when you He's, turn around. You might get poke yourself in the eye. Those big titties. I know. <laughs> no. Those are like those are like space shuttles or those rockets are torpedoes. or something. Like, torpedoes. Yes. <laughs> torpedoes. Exactly. Their man. backs must ache constantly. <laughs> it's like Jendi. <laughs> come on, oh, come on, man. We get it. You it was, like big butts and big boobs. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently. I mean, they can't even. Like they can't even like like they're defying gravity. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Like they yeah. won't. They're go hovering. Down. They're hovering. Yeah. They're, yeah. <laughs> but uh, like I say, he's a dictator, man, and. You know, when I say these people are slaves, I mean, they are straight up slaves to where he whips them. Mm-hmm. Black slave style. <laughs> Laser whip. Now make a wish. Feel, this is disturbing. Like this is really, man, this is, again, I'm surprised how they got away with what, what we're about to see because yeah. it's pretty, there's no blood or anything, but as far as like somebody being in excruciating pain, it's kind of graphic. The voice acting. Yeah. yeah sells it. The drawing yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's the, when I'm talking about the close-ups, like the Ren and Snippy yeah. things. Yeah, like, like his his jaw's about to fly out his mouth. Uh, Al. Again. <laughs> he's not as egotistical anymore. Like he's, oh, he's broken down. He's broken down. Yeah, yeah he, like he has no self confidence He's the polar opposite of old Dexter. Like he's brilliant and doesn't even know. Yeah. Where our Dexter, like he's so brilliant and he knows it, mm-hmm. and not and he not afraid to tell you. No. Now this guy's so brilliant, but he's been beaten into submission so much that he's you know the stuff that he does that is incredible. He just kind of thinks it's a little hobby because you know what he's supposed to really be doing is working. That's right. Typing. The neuroatomic protocol. These ideas are incredible. No, no, those are nothing. You should see the new cube we call design ideas. Stand by, 
<laughs> ten by ten. <laughs> you idiot. <laughs> Uh, even man, yeah, he's just supposed to be typing all the time. That was, I, I thought that was funny. That's Running that's gag. his specialty is that he's de- he designs cubicles. Damn. All those brilliant plans on the floor, mm-hmm. and he he makes squares. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mass, yeah. he, he makes boxes. Mm-hmm. Um, and I love he's so beaten down. Even his posture, I like that. You like even oh, his, yeah. like, the way he's animated. It's like he's always leaning. He's always forward. hunched over. Hunched over, yeah. And just the sound of Man Dog's voice just. Gives him PTSD. Hey, what's with all the rapping? Mazar? I'm typing, I'm typing. <laughs> I'm typing. Oh, I, I felt so bad. It's for like him. it's like Pavlov. He's like, oh, I'll, I'll go back to what I'm doing. <laughs> like he's just air typing. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I mean, I did feel bad for him. Been conditioned that way. There's this other future that they go to. This the far this, future. Yeah, the, this is them in another future. Like utopia. the far, far future. That's a good utopia. The, yeah, the utopia. And this is my favorite <laughs> Dexter <laughs> yeah and you know so yeah this is so a couple of good things in this future uh, the far far future uh, Man Dark something must have happened to him when he was defeated because now he's just a he's a brain in a jar there's nothing left of Man Dark but his lame brain oh I heard that too Oh, I'm warning you. <laughs> I love that line. I'm warning you. <laughs> the bubble effect. Uh, so that's one bit of good news. Man Dark is, seems to be under Defeated. control. Mm-hmm. Defeated, yeah. And uh, also, Dexter and this far, far future, his far, far future self is considered to be an almighty, be- an almighty being mm-hmm. with one little small drawback. <laughs> I like he can't even pick up his feet. He's got to shuffle across the floor. Shuffle. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> and again, that's those pregnant pauses. <laughs> Hi. Because <laughs> you're like, what is he going to do? Yeah. What great things is he going to say? Nothing. Hello. <laughs> oh, Lord, he's so uh, old. I love how forgetful he is. <laughs> yeah. It's brilliant. Mm. And so from that point, so they've got, we've collected two Dexters now. Yeah. You know, Nerdy Dexter and Almighty but Old Dexter. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you knew one of these futures had to be apocalyptic. Got it, got you Mad Max, man. You got you Mad Max. Yeah, man, I love that because their version of Mad Max is just not not road warriors, you know, not bandits going through the wasteland. <laughs> their, their version of this is just just a bunch of idiots. Pretty much idiocracy before idiocracy. Yeah, it sure was. Mm-hmm. No, it was. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> this is my favorite. Yeah, right this, there. This future. Mm-hmm. Oh. Oh, she goes to sleep on glass. Ooh, broken glass, glass, broken glass. Oh my lord! <laughs> this dude, I like that guy. <laughs> He's in his buck teeth for that. I just love how everybody's uh, just living in shit. Everybody, literally, that that those houses are made out of poop. That, yeah, feces. Because mm-hmm. you can see the puddles. Yeah, of shit around oh, there, man. That was stink. I, this is not mud, y'all. No. These people are building houses out of their own feces. Mm-hmm. This future, this apocalyptic future, is going to need something more than just a smart Dexter. Mm-hmm. You know, we're going to need a strong Dexter. That's right. Now, I'm playing this for a couple of reasons to illustrate what I was saying. Every time a new element is introduced, mm-hmm. except for maybe old Dexter, because <laughs> mm-hmm. he can't do too much action. No. But every time I introduce something new, they have a big action sequence. Right. They have a big just showcase of animation, mm-hmm. uh, which is what they're doing right here. But also, again, uh, they just do little funny things with the animation. I find myself just giggling <laughs> and just little stupid things. <laughs> You see? <laughs> yeah, we're badass. Look at look. <laughs> but that that this is probably my favorite one, man. Swole Dexter. Let there be fire for all. You, you burned down all of our houses. <laughs> they, were, they were piles of shit anyway. I know, but still. <laughs> but, but they were our piles of shit. Yeah. <laughs> you took that from us. So at least we had that. <laughs> I love the I love the backstory for uh, Swole Dexter because <laughs> for, at first it's similar to Nerdy Dexter's backstory, where they show how. Uh, uh, oh, girl, Uh-oh. you all right? What? A little sneeze? I, no, this is a little cough. Oh no! 
Pixie's cop. Yeah, that right? was too much action for too her. Too much action for you, <laughs> too, girl. Too excited. Yeah, you all right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, too guess. action packed for mm-hmm, Pixie. Mm-hmm. All that too much Dexter for you. Yeah. You all right, Mama? Yeah, all right. Uh, no, they they show how uh, in Nerdy Dexter's future how Mad Dark came to power, right? Which is pretty hilarious. And not so inspired, Mad Dark grew more and more jealous. Gain favor with the executive hierarchy. <laughs> And was quickly promoted up through their ranks. And with one diabolical coup, Mandar overthrew and became the very president of the world. Why did he get shot? He kicked him out of a window. <laughs> like, it's horrible. Several like, stories. Yeah, like, oh, he did. <laughs> I love it. He just kicked his ass out. That drawing is hilarious, mm-hmm, man. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I like the retro Bonneville cartoon coup, look. Mandar overthrew and became the very <laughs> he, you know, he'd like where uh, Nerdy Dexter was beaten down to some into submission. Right. Uh, Swole Dexter's like, nah, nah, I'm not, I'm not doing it. I'm not bowing down to anybody. I'm going to escape out of this uh, 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 dystopian society that we have. I went underground, literally, <laughs> for years. I died and died, inching my way to freedom. I love that he got big and strong because he just kept digging. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like he, didn't, he didn't eat or anything. He nah. just kept digging. Yeah, he got all the minerals down there, man. He absorbed them. He got his mouth and all that digging. He's eating worms and drinking his own sweat. Well, heavy in protein, man. Yeah, there you go. Mm-hmm. Um, also, this future has its own version. I like how every version has had its own man dark. Yes. Oh, yeah, I like that, too. They're count- basically their counterpart. The counter, yeah, they're counter to, to the Dexters. Mm-hmm. My old nemesis is not only mysteriously resurfaced, but has also found a way to enlist the aid of himself from other times. No matter, let them come. I have a few surprises of my own. <laughs> <laughs> I love the way they altered the voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fat, fat man dark. Yeah, he's a bo- he's B word fat. <laughs> <laughs> Dexter, I'll blast you to a blur. <laughs> let them, no matter, let them come. <laughs> He's still nerdy? Yeah, it's still nerdy. <laughs> uh, the, the dialogue oh. of this is hilarious, man. man. That's, that's, just, that's the thing about, you know, I know Jamie Tartoski often doesn't use dialogue more, but but back in the day, man, these are very well-written, funny scripts. Yeah, they are. Mm-hmm. They are. The mm-hmm. dialogue is cracking and, me up. And and the recurring gags and jokes that they have in this are, are, are amazing. Man, for me not, like, being thrilled when it started out, I'm, I, like, when we get to this part, I'm loving this man yeah it's really good i'm, I'm laughing so hard mm-hmm. like why don't why have i never seen this yeah, before yeah you have the the dexters versus the mad darks pretty much <laughs> like he's too lazy to even just laugh he, just, <laughs> he needs a hook and a wench to move around <laughs> And he doesn't say anything. He does. He's like, too oh. fat to laugh. <laughs> and this is another thing, man. Like, I remember at a time you couldn't even draw nipples. Nipples, I know. Now you got exaggerated oh, nipples here. Oh, God. In. They're like so engorged. <laughs> Elongated <laughs> nipples, man. Oh. So, this is probably my favorite part of the movie. Now, yeah. when I said that this predates a lot of, th- a lot of things, at least a couple of things, um, uh, idiocracy. But also notice that they're doing like multiverse stuff. They are, yeah. That that it's is true. so popular right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, going to these different futures and bringing and the, and the characters all get together. Like this is an end game situation before end game came mm-hmm. out, mm-hmm. man. The way he's going up. <laughs> Still, oh, I, was, I was laughing at Senior Citizen Dex. She's like, ah, he's being he's pulled, pulled along. Pulled. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, no. <laughs> 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 Slaps him. <laughs> that time for this. Yeah. Hit him with those nipples, man. Mm-hmm. Poke an eye out. <laughs> wow, he really is. Look at that. Yeah. Ass shot. He really is sucking those nipples, yeah, man. Look at that. Like, yeah, he's like, <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Nom noms. <laughs> Suckle. Suckle away. <laughs> <laughs> oh. They get a lot of funny gags out of that. I laugh when uh, Nerdy Dexter just had enough. Yeah, he lost it, it. Yeah, he lost it, and he just, his power animals came out. <laughs> Lions, tigers, and bears, and the dude was like, oh, oh my. my. Oh, no. My glass. 
Oh, I remember those whippets. That trauma is coming back. <laughs> oh. oh my! <laughs> I love it. Kicked his, kicked his ass with all the money. Flew. The money coming out of his cheeks. <laughs> oh shit! Gave his ass camel toe. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. No. Oh, oh there's a shot earlier when he's in like the full suit. You just see like the pants is wedged up his ass. It's earlier in the movie, but it's, oh really? Oh, my God, yeah, oh, yeah. Wow. Like, Ooh, getting the ass shots of this man. I'm telling you, <laughs> there's a lot. There's mm-hmm. a lot of them. Mm-hmm. Um, so I thought it was, I thought it was pretty clever what they did near the end. I got a problem with the ending. Now uh-huh. may, maybe maybe I don't know what's happening. Okay, but I have a problem with the ending. But I thought it was kind of cool what they did near the end. Because uh, Dee Dee hasn't been in here at all. No, just the beginning. Just the beginning, and so we—that's the last thing we expect is for Dee Dee to pop up and save the day. Right. But Dee Dee does pop up. Not only does she save the day, but I love it that she gets a reaction out of all the alternate decks. Yeah. No, Mandarks. Mm-hmm. Out, oh, of the yeah. diff- out of all the out of all the different versions of Mandarks is all like Dee Dee. <laughs> and I like she just found a way just to like, even when they go back in time mm-hmm. or go forward in time, she still finds a way to. Yeah, yeah. Well, She's, she she did go into the time machine earlier in the episode. Oh, she did. So she was okay. traveling before, but she probably didn't know the hell she was. <laughs> She's confused. All right, I want a movie where we get all the adventures of Dee Dee and where she went. Oh, the whole like time. what happened during this? Yeah, movie? that'd be funny. You know, she's the Captain America of this right now. Uh, yes, you're. Like right, she's right. the one that went on the time travel and mm-hmm. the altered timelines yeah. and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it saves the day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love that. And I love that when she saves the world, because what happens is it sends out some waves or something that turns all the stupid people smart. But I like that it's not they just they not only just turn smart, but they turn into like aristocrats. Yeah, that's what happens, man. You get smart. <laughs> Top hats and mm-hmm. shit. Monocles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the horse was mad now. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. This dude, like, got his bottom jaw all out. Yeah. Yeah. Classic surgery. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Idyllic future. (laughs) So, okay, so maybe maybe I'm, oh, oh, this is another thing. After they start to defeat all of the Mandarks, man, one of those Mandarks got killed in a really (laughs) bad way. It was horrifying. It was horrifying. I was like, damn, (laughs) you really did get away with a lot of stuff in uh, in this. Like, it's kind of violent. Mm Mm-hmm. Like all his cellulite went to his head. Yeah, I don't know. Well, and I, then his brain, his spine falls. Well, I'm wondering because it's like, is that like, is he like naturally fat? Or is that like he's just in, like swelled up because of brain matter? Because didn't he absorb all the yeah. like the smarts of the people? Yeah. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe that's what you it know, is. You yeah. know, and the thing did reverse, just doesn't know where to go. It's like, ah, and he just explodes. And then yeah. it explains why he's the brain later yeah. on, you know. So Dexter decides, because did he save the day? Yes. And how does Dexter repay her? He sends robots to kill her. <laughs> Literally, that's what they want to do. <laughs> Everyone. Robots that destroyed the one who saved their future. It's like, why? So you just sent these robots to assassinate your sister? Yeah. So here's what, uh, tell me if this, if I'm missing something mm-hmm. here, which I probably am. Mm-hmm. So. You, you do this big setup, which I thought was a big setup for a gag with Dee Dee. Like, I thought Dee Dee was going to defeat these robots just through her stupidity. Sure. But then it just, okay, so it seemed like it just ended flat to me. So Dee Dee shows up. I'm like, oh, shit, here we go. What's going to happen? Here's a big showdown. And then we get this. I'm going to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> That's it? Well, before that, you know, Dexter, they send the robots and they all, you know, go their separate ways. And then Dexter goes back and he realizes, oh, the robots that attacked me earlier were the robots that we all made. Yeah. And then he starts kind of breaking it down and time travel and all that. And he says, ah, forget it. <laughs> Your time travel makes my brain hurt. Um, and yeah, I, think I, I that, got that's that what part. it is. Okay. But, but, you know, you're right. Like that ending, it was... Um, it was just more like ah, it's like Didi because Didi's not completely unaware of like what's like what happened. She doesn't know, so it kind of adds on. I'm like, yeah. what was everyone mad about? What did I do? Oh, forget it. Time travel hurts on my brain. <laughs> yeah. You know, I thought that was I thought that part was cool, but mm-hmm. I thought, all right, man, you set up uh, you set up something for a good gag. Mm-hmm. It's so like just to have it in like that. I was this, like, this is literally like a shrug. <laughs> <laughs> a shrug. Huh? And that was me afterwards. I was like, huh? Mm-hmm. So yeah, the ending I thought it was pretty bad but 
you know, going back and look at it, look, you know, I got it. I got a lot of laughs out of this. Yeah. That 50 minutes passed real quick. It's when very I was fast. Watching this. Yeah, yeah. You don't feel it at all. No, you and, don't. And the other part of this, this was originally supposed to be the series finale. Oh, it was. But yeah, they because the show was just so successful and because of reruns, Cartoon Network's like, oh, we want to do more. Okay. And they changed the animation style after that. Oh, Because this was originally oh. all cell animated. Yeah. And then they went with, I guess it was just computer Computers stuff. Computers and stuff, yeah. And, you know, um, I don't remember, I'm not, I don't remember too many of those episodes. I feel like maybe that's where I fell off or something. Yeah. Maybe as a kid, I thought, well, that's it. It's over. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, uh, but no, I, I, I really like this. And, you know, I mean, I think just the, the writing and the, and the dialogue was hilarious. But you're right. The animation is just really, really good, even to this day. Well, despite my complaints. Sure. I really enjoyed this. So. That was great to revisit this. And I saw this. I was like, oh, okay. All right.